Deontay Wilder has publicly and formally turned down Eddie Hearn's offer to face Anthony Joshua in April and also the two fight situation, you know, where he could have fought for, I think, $5 million against anybody in the WBC top 15 in September and then taking on Joshua for $15 million in April. And again, the $5 million fight, that was optional. He could have just signed for the $15 million Joshua fight as a standalone in April 2019. Wilder has officially turned that down in this interview here with Boxing News. And I'm, let, me, let me give you some quotes here from Deontay Wilder. He continues to contradict himself about Anthony Joshua, by the way, because publicly he's called Joshua a coward and this, that, and the other. But then he goes on to say, well, it's not really Joshua. Joshua wants the fight. It's his team that are stopping him. So anyway, here he says, Joshua himself stated that it may take next year or the year after that. He's not confident in himself and his team isn't confident in him either. Eddie said he would avoid me until Joshua's trainer thinks he's ready. They don't think he's ready and the boy is never going to be ready. We were the ones reaching out to them and keeping the communication. We're moving on now. My goal is to set a record 51-0. I'm looking to clean out the heavyweight division. Let me see if I've missed any quotes from here. No, no, I've got, I've got the quotes. All right, so we're looking to clean out the heavyweight division. He goes on to say, Joshua and I had conversations on the side. He asked me to have my team email him certain things about the money. I said, sure, no problem. When we gave him the offer, he was super excited. He even took everyone on his team uh, to, out to eat. We thought Joshua was more in control than he was, but we found out that wasn't that he wasn't. It's sad to see him allow these people to do what they're doing. He can't do nothing that he wants to do. As you can see, they stopped him from doing any interviews about me because he would say one thing and they would say another. Joshua really wanted the fight for 50 million. Next thing we know, they're talking about fighting in his country for less money. In the contract he sent, there was no date, no venue. If I beat Joshua, they get a rematch. But if they beat me, it's up to him. Just a bunch of bogus things. A lot of the aspects in the deal were basically non-starters. Okay, this is an, ind an industry source. It says here, an industry source with knowledge of negotiations verified Wilder's claims. They said a lot of the aspects in the deal were basically non-starters. There was no venue and no date. And the rest leaned heavily in their favor. Joshua was definitely interested in Wilder's offer. Who wouldn't be? It was a 50 million base plus upside. So it was a huge win-win for him. I'm not sure why it didn't get off the ground, but he was very interested. And this is Wilder here. I think he says, I didn't say I didn't believe the money's not. No, sorry, this is Hearn now. Hearn says, I didn't say it. I didn't believe the money's not there. Um, okay, this is stuff Hearn has already said before. Wilder now says, when your career is over with, are those same people going to help your bills, a promoter or a manager? Those jobs you can do your whole, uh, you can do your whole life, but boxers can't do this forever. They're not looking out for his best interests. He wanted that 50 million, but he ain't in control and he's scared as well too. He can't speak up. Eddie Hearn is a 37 year old childish boy. He wants to be famous and have the popularity as a promoter. This is a game to him, but we're not about playing games. He contradicted himself many times. I sacrificed everything and took every offer that was thrown at me. But every time we reached the goal, they moved the goalposts. So we got, well, I have to pull Wilder up here because Wilder's saying we accepted every offer. Well, no, because the first offer that was made was from Team Joshua and Wilder turned it down. That was for 12 million or 12.5 million. So they turned that offer down and it was Joshua's team who initially reached out to try and make the fight. Let's be clear about that. There's no dispute about that. It was Joshua's team who were the first ones to reach out and make an offer and try and make the fight. And they were the ones who tried to reach out and try to organize a meeting even after Wilder's team turned down Joshua's offer and encountered with a 24-hour take-it-or-leave-it offer. 
it was Joshua's team who tried to continue the negotiations and tried to have a sit down and meet face to face and Wilder's team didn't want to. Wilder is conveniently not talking about that. He says Eddie Hearn is a childish boy and he likes the limelight. Yeah, Eddie Hearn does like the limelight. <laughs> he does like the limelight. Uh, there's no question about that. He's like the P. Diddy of boxing. You know, when P. Diddy had Biggie Smalls and Craig Mack and the Locks and all these other rappers, P. Diddy was putting himself in the videos and trying to make himself a star as much as the actual artist that he had signed. He was in, up in all their videos. And that's something that Suge Knight dissed him about. I'm going back to 90s rap here, people. So showing my age. But anyway, uh, when it comes to that aspect of Eddie Hearn's personality, the fact he likes the limelight and he's trying to be a celebrity promoter, yes. But being a promoter involves that. It involves the, you being in the limelight if you're going to be a successful promoter because you have to promote the product that you're selling, which is this, which is your fighters and the fights. So Eddie Hearn is good at what he's doing, at selling fights, being a salesman. He's definitely a natural born salesman. I'm pretty sure that nobody would dispute that. He's a good talker and a good salesman. Uh, does he talk a lot of rubbish at times, Eddie Hearn? Of course he does. <laughs> is he a, quite a conceited, arrogant guy at times? He definitely comes across that way, you know. But it doesn't mean that he's always in the wrong. It doesn't mean that he's always lying. And there are people on Wilder's side who certainly don't tell the truth anyway, uh, either. But anyway, um, Wilder's talking about the, the zone offer. He says, we're done with that. Only we needed, only thing we needed was, to unif was the belt to unify. The 50 million is off the table. That flat fee I was going to take, all of that is off the table. If they ever come back to us, it's going to be 50-50 straight down the line. I'm just glad the blindfolds are off people's eyes. Even casual fans can see what happened. For those who can't, the ones I call Eddie's zombies, they can be a fool behind him. Now, this is where we get to the whole crux of the situation. Deontay Wilder is saying that if Joshua and Hearn ever come back to him, the only deal he'll accept is 50-50. I hope that this is a negotiating tactic from Deontay Wilder. I hope it's a negotiating tactic. I hope he don't really mean this because if he's talking really about him wanting 50-50 to get the fight done, then that's basically saying that he don't really want the fight. I mean, maybe it's a bit of anger for him. Maybe he's not think thinking straight. He's not thinking clearly because of the fact he's angry at the moment or frustrated or whatever the case may be because he's an emotional character. But Deontay Wilder's team, if they are really demanding 50-50 from Joshua because he could sign to fight Joshua right now we know that offer is still on the table Wilder's turning it down he's saying no nah, I want 50-50 now that means the fight's not going to happen because there's no way that Joshua and Hearn I mean I'd be very surprised if they were to, to give Deontay Wilder a 50-50 deal because Joshua is the one who is by far the bigger name in boxing. He's by far the bigger cash cow. You look at Anthony Joshua's purses and compare them to Deontay Wilder's purses in their past few fights, it's not even close. So when a guy is earning eight, seven, eight, ten times more than you, how can you demand 50-50? Not only is he earning seven, eight, ten times more than you, he's also got three belts and you've only got one. How could you possibly ask for 50-50? It's not realistic at all. So I'm going to give Deontay Wilder a pass for now, saying that he's an emotional guy, and I don't think he's the most business savvy person in the world. You know, he's a country bumpkin. <laughs> no disrespect, you know. Uh, but that's what he is, in my view. He's a country bumpkin. He's a hillbilly. <laughs> he's a good fighter. He's a dangerous guy. He could knock out most men on the planet <laughs> with that right hand. But at the negotiating table as a businessman, man, he, he's, he's a yokel, you know. So I think this is an emotional response. And I'm going to give him a pass saying that he wants 50-50 because I don't think he's thinking straight. But his team, if they also are demanding 50-50 from now on, then it means they don't really want to fight. And what are they going to do really? Unless Joshua loses, what is Wilder's team going to do? They've got one belt. 
Joshua's got three belts. Joshua's selling out stadiums. He's making, you know, 15, 20, 30 million pounds a fight. So that's more in dollars. That's like 20, 25, 26 million dollars a fight. Maybe more, 30 million dollars a fight, whatever it is. I can't do the pounds to dollars calculation off the top of my head. But he's making a hell of a lot more than Wilder. So where's Wilder going to go? Financially, Deontay Wilder needs Joshua way more than Joshua needs Wilder right now. And obviously Wilder's market value has taken a boost over the past few months with this public beef with Joshua. In fact, Wilder should be thanking Joshua and Eddie Hearn for boosting his public profile. I mean, the Ortiz fight did some, but really the Anthony Joshua beef has done more to boost Deontay Wilder's public profile and make him more of a name in the United States because now he's got all these fanboys who were never his fans a year ago <laughs> when people like me and Boxing Beats and Rhymes and you know Boxing Gossip and all these other channels were making loads of videos about Wilder covering his fights who he was fighting and, and actually defending Wilder a lot of the time when we were do, doing all this a year ago two years ago three years ago 90% 90, 90 of these Wilder fanboys they weren't watching Deontay Wilder fights. Because they're just fanboys. They're just Johnny Come Latelys. Bandwagon jumpers. Hype, chain, hype train jumpers, you know? They're not, not really true boxing fans like me and other people who've been following Wilder for years and years. <laughs> Making videos about Wilder for years. I've been making videos about Wilder before he was champion. But anyway, <laughs> these fanboys who Wilder has picked up overnight, um, literally overnight, he needs to thank Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua for getting him all these fanboys at the end of the day. Because it stirred up a lot of patriotism in the United States and they've jumped on Wilder's bandwagon and on his hype train. Because of the fact that the rival, Anthony Joshua, is English. So, anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Uh, we know for a fact that Eddie Hearn has said that the deal is still on the table. He can sign it. Deontay Wilder has turned it down. He's turned down 15 million to face Anthony Joshua in April. You can remix that and spin it whatever way you want. The fact remains he's turned down the fight. He can get the fight in April, guaranteed 15 million. He's turned it down. Now he's saying he wants 50-50. Can you really say that a guy who earns 10 times less or 8 times less than Anthony Joshua really wants to fight if he's demanding 50-50? As I said, I'm going to give him a pass because he's an emotional guy. But if his team are also talking about 50-50, if Shelly Finkel or any of these dudes start talking about 50-50, they don't want to fight. Clearly. Anyway, drop your comments in the comment section below, people. Let me know how you feel about this. It's happening, I'm out.